judges, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> it's our great honor to stand here to share an idea, a business model, and a possible solution for an important but also long ignored problem in China. The problem is about the interest of Chinese students. Now in China, there are mainly three types of students. The first type, they have interest, and they are pursuing their interest. The second type, they have interest, but they didn't, but they give up. The third type students, they don't have any interest. All right, our program will be benefit for all three types of students. For the first type of students, they don't have any interest. We will help them to generate an interest through art to history course, through business to performance, through joint, through combined course to special course. We will expose those students to a diverse to a diverse field, and we will show them the different possibilities of their future. For the second type of students, they have interest. However, they give it up. Maybe because they get boring, or they don't have enough time, but most probably, they're just too lazy. Those students need some motivations. They need to be more passionate about their interest. And this is also part of our task. We want to make students more passionate about their interest. Now, for the third type of students, they are very motivated, and they have interest. They are pursuing their interest. Maybe through cram school, or reading books, or watching videos online. However, for them, that's not enough. They need something else. They need a group where people share the same interest. They need a teacher who will lead them to the right position. And those two things are exactly what we will provide. We have the resources to create a community, and we have we will invite the most helpful teacher to teach our students. So in general, our resources are accessible to all three types of students, and we are trying to make these two types of students more passionate, and hopefully will generate interest for the first type of students. So I will turn to Xander. We will further explain our program. Hello everyone, I'm Alexander, and I will explain sort of where we come in as diversified. So Diversify is a tool for those who want to teach, a source for those who want to learn, and a link between the two. So as a tool for those who want to teach, basically we facilitate in the development of courses that those who want to teach uh, create, making it more presentable and credible and uh, teachable for the students, sort of to meet a standard. As a source for those who want to learn, we want to sort of take them away from the standardized, traditional way of learning that you find in Chinese school. Now, by that, I don't mean that we want to start a war with the schools, but rather that we want, we want to develop a different way of learning that is more interactive. And I'll explain that more on the next slide. And we act as a link between the two. Basically, we connect those who have a passion to teach and those who want to learn. So we, we create a common ground between the two. Next slide, please. All right, has anyone ever felt like this person in this picture? Okay, well, I can definitely tell you that I have. Like, wanted to take this violin and just throw it across the room. And I can see that you have too, probably. All right, um, well, sometimes we feel this way because of school, because we have to meet some standard, such as testing and having a certain score, having to compete better than others and just do better than others. And we want to sort of go away from this, this concept that you have to, that we learn because we have to learn, not because we want to learn. And we would prefer students to feel like in the next slide. Here you see that she's very passionate about what she's doing. She likes it and uh, we wanna make our classes feel more like this. And we wanna do this by having a more action-oriented, uh, interactive, hands-on kind of uh, learning experience. So it's more about projects and working with the person who is teaching smaller classes where you get to actually interact, and less about testing and memorizing and learning. And so now I'll hand it over to Bowen who will talk more about the courses. Hi everyone, I'm Bowen. Um, so today, our company Diversify is going to reinvent the way that you will learn interest. So how are we going to do that? Let's start from the sources. Usually in a normal cram school, you have the teachers who are trained to teach in a specific field. But we are not, we don't want that. We want, there's, 
due to the technology and social media, we can find people who are talented in their fields. And then we'll gather them together to, to form our talent pool. So it comes to what areas are we going to focus on? Um, are we going to, what kind of areas? Um, for, first, think, I, want you to, I want to invite you to think of a uh, fun experience in your childhood. So we all have the experience that we mix colors together, right? That we find the different colors formed together to form a new color. So we're going to find our basic color spectrum. And then, then it comes to our interest spectrum. These are the interests that, um, that most Chinese students are popular in, like ag economics, film, physics, sport, and English. So are we going to just develop courses in these fields? That, that most norm, uh, normal cram school already did that. But think of this, uh, the mixing colors. When you mix those colors together, that's where magic happens, right? Then it comes, we're having our revolutionary classes. Just look at the titles. The story of milk, economics and the planting of garden, and making storyboard in English, and physics in basketball. We are including these interdisciplinary and experiential courses that you cannot get anywhere else. So let's just look at one of our examples, the story of milk. In the story of milk, you can learn about the manufacturing and production and delivery of the milk that comes to your table every, every morning. And also, what I would love most is like you would go, we will go to a field trip to the factory that you can actually see what the workers are doing to produce their milk, that this, this kind of experience will really trigger the students to think about the world. And you know, we're in this 21st century, and every problem needs a unified, you know, an interdisciplinary and diverse view of, of knowledge. And then this kind of hands-on experience can give them this need. Yeah, so, um, so I'll give it to my um, partner, T, to talk about how our business is going to run. Thank you, Roman. So in our implementation, we are going to start by making connections with friends and family to get uh, possible, possible suppliers to teach in our programs. Also, by collaborating with schools, we will be able to get some attention from our prospect students. And then we will design a course, special course, combined course, and then we will let the suppliers teach those courses. So with our help, suppliers will be able to create events, researches, projects, or classes that are a combination of unique things. Then they will be able to gain experience, and also they will be able to make profit, which will be higher than they go to normal cram school. The fee for attending these, our, our program will also be cheaper than they will go to normal cram school for our customers. To draw attention from our customers, we are going to combine courses that are considered useful, which are like school's materials with interesting courses. This way, they will be able to learn that school's materials by a way that is more interesting, more fun than they have never think of before. Today, 20% of students in China are attending some kind of camp, cram school. The number is almost 70% in major cities. Education is a big market in China. By 2014, the estimate of market size is around $66.5 billion. So you can see that education is a very monopolistic market, so there's a high chance that we will be able to get into the market. At the beginning phase, we won't be able to make a lot of profit because we have to pay to the experts and professionals to design the courses and also we don't have that much suppliers and customers. And, but we expect that we will be able to grow exponentially as we get more and more suppliers and customers. So please support us and we diversify. Thank you very much. Two paths, uh, two pathways. First is we will be the main producer of our special courses, um, so that we will invite uh, we will invite those talented people to teach these courses 
or those people who want to learn, uh, want, want to teach, they come to us and they will, they will um, try to figure out what kind of courses they want to teach. And then we will charge students. And then we charge students, take a small share of their tuition, and then pay for those teachers. So this is the first kind of financial model. And the second type is those talented people who bring their own special courses to us because of our brand. And then they will take most share of the tuition, and then we will take a small share of the tuition. If I understand you correctly, you're going to design some courses. You'll get a higher margin on the ones that you design and recruit instructors for. You'll also have courses designed by instructors. You'll have a lower margin on those. Did I hear yes. you right? Yes, yes. Who picks the curriculum? Do the students pick which way they go with the mixing colors? information that you had, I really like that, or do you pick for them based on their interests? How do you do that? Oh, so um, this this is a very basic question. And for the first serious courses, we will conduct survey and then try to come up with some popular interest. And then we will figure out what the students need the most. And then we will in, invite those talented people, professionals, and then we will create the courses together to cater for their need. And after the first series of courses, we will gather the response from the students. We will evaluate, re evaluate these courses, and then to see we will um, continue in conducting these courses, we will be invent some new courses. Well, like you said, um, there are a lot of tech schools um, in China, and um, I know. Um, your course sounds interesting, but uh, how can you make your teaching methods and results stand out and stay competitive within the first couple of years? Or my main question is, how do you evaluate your teaching results and uh, make parents trust and believe that you are a great school? Okay, so for this question, um, we just introduced that for the series uh, for the first phase of our company, we will combine our material with those in-class material, which means that, for example, students might want to learn math, but we won't only offer math. We will combine math with other subjects and then make the classes highly interdisciplinary. And what is the and then I think your question is parents mainly focus on the outcome whether students will improve their grades or not. So the result will be because in this learning process, students become more passionate about their interest, and students generate their interest not only in the courses that is in school, but also subject of school. And, the, and then students, um, it's like estimated students, because for learning, even though in school it's said teacher teach you, but the most important thing of learning is by yourself. You have to be passionate about it. You have to be interested in learning so that you can have good grades, right? So your passion, your interest in learning is much more important than how good a teacher it is in school or the material in school. So through our courses, the outcomes will be as students not only have, not only gain familiar, familiar become more familiar with their in-class material, but also they gain passion. And then we believe that by this, their grades will improve. And then that's how parents can trust us. How many students do you expect in the first year? And uh, what, uh, what is your planning in terms of the, your staff and students' ratio? The most important um, from the profit that you are expecting, do you expect uh, how long would it take to cover the expense that, that you are going to have to uh, have to pay out in terms of to, to sustain this entire operation? Would it take one year, two year, three year? Um, so for the course, uh, cost still be like this um, because for those cram school, their main cost is the rent cost and the costing pay the um, wage of those um, tutors. And for us, because we will have less photon tutors, but like more relatively, in, um, we have more like part-time tutors. And then for those 
professional, it's like a one-time fee that they help to design the course. So we expect that we will have less cost than those traditional prep schools. And because of this, um, the cost will be low, but the charges, uh, the, we charge students at, so, so that we can charge students at a relatively low amount. And so by this, we can, so by this we can, um, I think because it's like less course and less charges, we can draw more students. We, now we cannot estimate how many students we are going to draw in one year, two year, or maybe five years because um, we haven't had have like similar model, exist existing model in China. So it's very hard, or, or even we estimate something, it would, buy, it would be less, or uh, it would be uh, less um, credibility. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, that was Thank a you. 